The reason why I like this topic is my honest belief that if you are a business owner, then you should have a book. Your book is like your calling card. It's like your business card. It's what says you are the expert. I'm telling you that when people see that you've written a book, they categorize you as an expert in your field. It's like somebody Googling you and seeing that you've written a book. They're going to be more impressed. In fact, your credibility will go up when people see that you've written a book. And I've been an Amazon bestseller. I've written quite a few books. So I'm going to tell you now the top 10 tips for writing your first book. So if you've been thinking about writing a book, <laughs> you are in the perfect place to get the exact information you need to be able to help you publish your first book. At least it's going to give you all the tips that you need to move yourself forward. So let's get started. My name is Bumi Tokon. Now, the first thing I want you to know is that, this is tip number one, is that there's good news now. Today you can publish, you can write, publish, and sell your own book without a publisher. Now, I'm not saying don't go to publishers because publishers, that's another level. Publishers can do things that you may not be able to do yourself. But you have the opportunity right now to write your own book, to publish it, and to sell it. And the way I think about it is this. I'm thinking, hang on a minute. There are 7 billion people on earth. Surely 10,000 people or 100,000 people may like what I'm doing. They may just like me. They may like my approach. They may like the way I speak. They may like the way I write. Why not? So if you are thinking about writing a book, I would suggest you think that way because there are lots of people that would appreciate what you have to say. Okay. The second tip is to create the time. Once you've decided you're going to write your book, the next thing that needs to happen is to create the time. And in my book on how to write your first book, I said, uh, create it and guard it. You got to create it and you need to guard the time. I'm telling you because when you have planned to write your book, that's when something else wants to show up. No, you've got to guard it with diligence. You've got to say, no, I've got to just sit down and write today. If you've decided to, to write a book, so I want to suggest, you don't have to follow exactly what I'm saying, but I want to suggest to you to write at least 15 minutes a day, three to five days a week. 15 minutes, just set the time. I'm going to write for 15 minutes every day. And if you write for 15 minutes every day, before you know it, within three months, you've written a book. Now, a book can be 50 pages. It can be 100 pages. I mean, um, you know, there are people, Grant Cardone wrote a book on how to be a millionaire or how to make your first million, something like that. And he published it on Amazon. That book is probably about mm, t t maybe 15 pages, 20 pages, but so powerful book. And there are books that are less of less pages than that, that are so good. One of the top selling books on Amazon at one point was just about, I don't know, three or four pages. It was very, very good book and top selling. So when you talk about writing a book, it doesn't have to be 300 pages. It can be 300 pages. I'm not saying it shouldn't be, but I'm just, I'm also letting you know that you can write a 15, 20, 100 page book and that will suffice. Just make sure no fluff. People don't have time for fluff these days. Just get to the point, tell them what they need to do, why they need to do it, how they need to do it and let them get value out of it. So it's important for you to create the time and just sit, you know what, even if you don't feel like writing anything, just sit there for 15 minutes and write whatever comes to your mind because you need to train yourself to actually uh, sit down to write. Okay, tip number three, what do you write about? People ask that question. Okay, Bumi, what shall I write about? Well, write about what you know. Write about what you're familiar with. Write about what you like. Write about what you enjoy. Write about 
uh, topics that you are already working in. If you are a business owner, and I'm just going to pick this out of the hat, let's say you are a window consultant and you go around people's houses and consult for them, write about how to fit the perfect windows in your house. Write about why windows uh, would save you money. Whatever. Just write about what you know. If you're a consultant in a business and you are working with, let's say you're working with uh, businesses that are turning over a million, you might want to write a book on how to turn over, how to reach your first one million pounds turnover because you already know how your clients have done it. You can, without divulging any kind of secret, you can tell the next person how to reach their million pound turnover. So write about what you know. If in doubt, ask your family, ask your friends, ask your clients what you should write about and they'll tell you. But write about a subject that you are familiar with. Now, number four, this is a very, very good one. Choose a niche. Do not try to write for everybody. Well, I say that and <laughs> somebody might say, well, you know, what about the bestsellers? All oh, the bestsellers that sold, uh, you know, 25 million copies, surely that's for everybody. But I'm telling you, I think in the beginning, write for a particular audience because then you can start your marketing for that audience. If you're writing for beginners, write for beginners. If you're writing for intermediate, write for intermediate. If it's for advanced level, then write for advanced level. Because when it comes to marketing, when you first start, especially if you're doing it yourself, you want to be able to market to a group that actually needs it. If you write about how to make your first 50,000 or whatever, then you're appealing to a specific group of people that want to get to the 50,000 mark. If you're writing for how to get your first 100,000, you are writing for that group of people who want to get to that 100,000 pounds mark in terms of turnover so or income. So be specific. Choose the niche that you want to write for. Then number five, start from the beginning. This is so important because sometimes when we know a subject so well, we can readily assume that the writer already knows the steps. And you say, well, you know, all you need to do is just do that. And they're like, well, how do I get to the that first? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. So always start from the beginning. Take people through the subject step by step. If it's a, an instruction book, take them through. If it's a nonfiction book, take people through step by step. Don't assume that people already know. Because too many times, the reality is we don't know. But because you are the expert, you assume that everybody knows it. But that's not the case. <laughs> so take people through step by step, starting from the beginning. Now, use Amazon. I'm sure at the time of publishing this video, there's so many other platforms you can use. I don't deny that. But I know about Amazon. Uh, I'm not saying it's the only platform, but Amazon is a good platform. They, uh, you know... Uh, credit your account on time. They do anything to sell your books because they want to make money. And they are the largest book sellers in the world at the moment, as far as I know. So Amazon is a good place to start. Plus, it's free for you to publish all formats on Amazon. Well, let me say that with some uh, uh, caution there. It is free for you to publish your um, Kindle which is the digital copy. It is free also for you to for you to publish the hard copy. You could do your audio copies free as well, but I would not suggest that. So when I come to the next point, I'm going to tell you about that. But you can publish all your formats on Amazon. Now, here is a big secret. Use an editor. My goodness, that's one of the things that costs me. It really did cost me when I first started putting out books years and years ago. I used to try and edit myself. And when that didn't work, I tried to use just a friend. Uh, my daughters were editing for me. And it didn't quite, I mean, they did better than I did. But <laughs> it wasn't quite right. 
until I started using editors. Now I use an editor, I pay for it, I get an editor from Fiverr, so you might wanna, you know, go on Fiverr, see if you can get somebody and make sure they're good. And sometimes just using a retired English teacher can be the best thing that has ever happened to your book writing process because you're going to need a team of people around you. An editor is one of those. Somebody can go through your work, you know, make sure that the grammar is right, the phrases are right, everybody understands what you're trying to say, there's no errors, there's no missing words, no missing sentences. Oh my goodness, just, that makes me cringe because that used to happen to me. Oh my goodness. But now I use an editor, so <laughs> everything is smooth. Um, at least I hope. Yeah. So use an editor to read your work and to correct all your errors. Number eight, aha, use a designer. Again, I've tried designing book covers myself. There was a time I was putting out this uh, small book. So it was like, it was going to be like, oh, I was thinking of putting about out about a hundred of those small books. So I thought, oh no, let me just try and do the graphics myself. It was awful. I would not do that again. <laughs> I would not do that again. So my thing now is use a graphic designer. Even if it costs you money, use a graphic designer because your book cover is like the window to your shop. You got to dress it well. Your book cover will either can make your book or ensure that it fails. So <laughs> use a designer. You might be able to go on Canva and have a go yourself on creating a book cover, but I would suggest go onto Fiverr or go onto other platforms, find someone who can help you and pay them some money and get a book cover done because it's well worth it. And number nine, your promotion use influencers. You got to do, in thinking about book promotion for you, uh, if you're releasing the book yourself, I would suggest that you do a book launch. That's what I'll say. Do a physical book launch or an online book launch so that you can ramp up your sales and make enough money on that first release. Then you can, um, you know, really persuade others to review your book because if you have a book on Amazon and it's got a lot of reviews it's going to help your sales ranking which means you're going to make more money over the long haul if you keep on getting reviews so you need like credible reviews one way of doing that is to do a book launch and then off the back of the book launch get your friends your families people not in the same IP address as you, because if you use, this is another thing that I learned <laughs> by, by fire, because I used to get my, you know, my children to just review the book. And then Amazon picked up on the fact that, hey, these reviews are coming from the same IP address, even though they read my book before they reviewed it, they don't, Amazon don't like it. Where that's changed, I don't know. And I'm not willing to find out. So, <laughs> Get people from different IP addresses to review your book, to buy and re review your book so that they become verified buyers uh, on Amazon. And then nowadays, in the UK at least, you can now publish a video as part of your review as well. Now, finally, number 10 uh, is the point that I want to make. Make sure you publish all formats. Sometimes people only do a digital format or a hard copy format and they miss out on the audio. Oh my goodness. I've sold thousands of audios um, through Amazon's Audible, through ACX is the platform where, where you get the audio done, but it's for Amazon's Audible. There are two ways to publish your audio books. Well, three ways, actually. Number one is you can record the audio. Yeah, I've done that. You record the audio and then publish it on Amazon. I wouldn't suggest you do that. Well, mm, it depends. I've done that and it hasn't really worked for me in terms of sales, but I've done it. A second way of doing it is to, um, you don't pay the 
narrator who does the recording, but they share 50% for life, I think, of the um, profits from that particular audio, just the audio side. They only share uh, 50% of the audio's payments that Amazon gives. I think Amazon gives about around about uh, 40% or 30%, and that 30% is shared between both of you. So, um, and they get that for life. The third way, which is what I recommend, is find somebody on Amazon, on the platform, who is good. The platform is called acx.com. It's like the workstation for Audible. I think Amazon actually bought that years and years ago and they kept the name acx.com, but it's part of Amazon, all right? So if you go on there, you will find maybe new narrators who are willing or somebody who is good, but maybe they're having a down season and they're willing to record your book. If it's a short book, like a hundred pages, you might get it done for like 70 to a hundred dollars. I'm telling you it's worth it because when you do it that way, all the money comes to you. They don't have a share of any of that royalty. All the royalty from the sale of the audiobooks comes directly to you and you do not share with the narrator. But it's important, it's critical that you do all formats. Don't stop on digital formats. Definitely do hard copies. At least do the hard copies because people wonder, is hard copies selling nowadays? Oh my goodness, hard copies is still selling. I still bought some books from Amazon <laughs> recently. Okay, they're uni books, but hey, it's books, it's books. No, I actually do buy books on Amazon still. So hard copies do sell. I bought a book for one of my daughters. I sent it to her. She was really happy to have received the book. She said, oh, she's been looking forward to reading the physical book. I said, oh my goodness, physical books are still selling. So definitely you want to do a hard copy. And now uh, when I say hard copy there, it actually means paper copy and a hard, proper hard copy. Amazon now does a proper hard copy as in hard copy. It's more expensive and... Um, Unless you are really going to sell a lot of, of them, um, you, you well, it doesn't cost you anything to 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 do it to actually uh, publish it because all it costs you is the amount of money you pay the designer because it's a different kind of book cover design. So you might have to pay for uh, the paper copy design and the hard copy design because the measurements are a little bit different. But with the hard copies, you can actually purchase, you can buy some of your, you can buy author copies. And author copies are cheap. They're like $1.70 or pound seventy a copy. If your book is a paper copy, paperback, and it's about 100 pages, you might pay like, you know, uh, um, two, two pounds or whatever to get it. But if it's a hard copy, because I published a hard copy recently it cost me 12 pounds no um no yeah it would it would cost around eight pounds if i bought the author copy <sighs> but if you're gonna sell it for 20 quid then but they do look good <laughs> the hard copies look good because of the way it's designed so but do all formats do a digital format hard copy and audio because a lot of people are reading audio they are walking around the house, doing the chores, driving, listening to books. So do do because you'll be missing out on a lot of income if you're not publishing your books on audio. And then here's a bonus, right? Go on to a website called babelcube.com, B-A-B-E-L cube.com and get your book transcribed into different languages. Yeah, I've got some of my books in Italian, some of them in Portuguese, some of them in German, some of them in, in, in French. Um, you don't pay to do that. They would get uh, their own um, translators to do it and they share the profit. But I haven't really got paid much from Babel Cube. But then I must admit, I've not invested too much time on it so it's okay it's nice to know that your book is published in different languages and somebody out there is reading your book in a different language so 
that's what i have for you today if you've liked this video do comment below let me know what you particularly liked about it or didn't like about it do comment if you have a question put it in the description box because i will be reading them personally and replying to them if you want to talk to any of our consultants about how we can help you with your book do take uh, the advantage of this introductory offer at the time of recording this video sign up to our new newsletter but by all means do sign up to this particular channel and share it and um, i hope to see you soon thank you so much for joining me today as we have gone through the top 10 tips of for writing your first book god bless